Hello chicos, chicas, chess lovers, welcome back. This is round 10 recap from the World Championship. Now it is Ding behind the white pieces and if my math is correct, he's going to have around 12 and around 14, two more whites if the match goes all the way. So now there is extra weight added, extra pressure on the players behind the white pieces. Let's see what Ding managed to pull off. Uh, today. Well, for starters, he pulled off c4, which is exactly what I predicted in my interview with Ben Johnson, which you shall check out um, on his awesome podcast. So indeed, we are back to English territory, Ding's favorite hunting ground. And of course, Nepo responds with his beloved e5. This time round, however, Ding uncorked this e4 variation, which it's quite an interesting choice against Nepo because I found in the database Nepo games with both colors for this opening system, which tells me that he must know what he's doing here. And so entering this line must mean that either Ding felt very confident or he had not, no better idea as to what to do. Nepo responded with Bishop C5, which walks into this very, very famous and uh, thematic knight takes E5 tactic with 95 d4 in fact back in the 80s and 70s players who played the system with black often wanted to dodge this so they played bishop b4 here and let's say that white responded with d3 they played d6 white played g3 and then they slid the bishop back to c5 uh denying the 95 by the virtue of having played uh, d6 first a very interesting way to lose a tempo even just to read out the bishop to this optimal diagonal covering d4 square but theory has proven this to be yeah just not not really that great so everyone is now playing bishop c5 allowing this and this variation with d4 bishop b4 d94 has been known for decades and decades and decades uh back in the day there were a fair few games played with queen d4 um and here the um analogy is quite uh, stark with the game continuation where we went queen f3 queen g3 so you can see that the only difference is the location of the queen now both moves just like in the game queen uh, g3 and he queen g4 forces king f8 however the big difference from white's perspective now is is that i'm looking down in the barrel of the sniper and so d6 is going to come with a tempo meaning that i will have to waste another move with the queen and that would land us more or less in the game with black to move and so this queen f3 idea took over recently in theory with sliding the queen to g3 rather than to g4 once again the concept is crystal clear hitting the g7 pawn when castling is not possible because of the well-known bishop h6 trick and now black must part with the exchange in order to um, avoid the mate on that note i want to mention to you though that there are a fair few openings where black actually allows this sacks the exchange and plays on like nothing happened and even here by the way although the engine does give a noticeable edge to white it certainly isn't an outright win like a plus four so um yeah that's just an interesting fact for you there that uh, even that is not as terrible as it may look but of course on pro level everyone is gonna play king f8 now this is ugly right because it's uh yeah uh, this move denies the castling rights from black uh but of course the pawn structure is really really wonky on white's end so this is what chess players uh, like to refer to especially when they want to write in a funky style uh showcasing their incredible vocabulary a dynamic equilibrium which means that um, it's not the stock standard type of equal when we have got the same amount of pieces and the same structure but the polar opposite of that when I have got a lot of advantages of one sort they have got a lot of advantage advantages of other sorts and the two somehow uh, cancel each other out into uh, a level situation and that is basically what you are observing here that white has got thumb cards but so does black and neither can outweigh the other unless serious mistakes are made. D6 was played, very logical. Bishop f4, queen e7, again, very, very crystal clear logic, trying to put some pressure on the e-file, developing the queen, all good. Rook d1, attacking d6, and h5. Now, this move is very, very typical in scenarios where once king 
um, has made a move, Kent Castle, and therefore castling by hand the manual castle or the artificial castle, whichever way you like to call it, is on the menu. This move is hugely useful to deploy the rook because now very often you will find that the rook will uh, be employed on the sixth rank or even on the fourth rank if that's what uh, white is going to allow and of course additionally to that this pawn being pushed down all the way to h3 can often cause a bit of discomfort for white when they castle short which is precisely what they did note that here taking on d6 would lead to an end game very similar to the game not a lot of joy for white let's be honest with ourselves um rook d6 is already looking like a worse position after bishop g4 queen takes queen takes rook takes king e7 and um there is no way that black could ever lose this or should ever lose this uh, because although white is a pawn to the good but those are two super ugly isolated pawns uh, yeah, this is definitely not winnable, uh, especially not on this standard. So Dean correctly decided to keep the life in the position by castling, allowing h4. But he Nepo struck very, very quickly with g5, a really, really cool move, forcing the bishop away from the e5 pawn or rather forcing white to take on d6 because otherwise e5 would drop. And now we are going to enter an endgame by force. And what was very interesting about this position to me too, as well as to the, uh, excuse me, um, to the commentators, was the fact that it actually appeared to be really nice for white compared to this position that I showed you then. The only difference is, is that the two black pawns are here and here and white is castled, right? But that is a huge difference because what's going to happen now is, is that white has this marvelous um, F4 move. And it all looks like, um, you know, happy days for white because if GF, the pawns are split and um, all of a sudden um, white has got noticeable play. However, here the really, really cool move is King E7 and that is the move that puts a massive dent in... Uh, uh, in um, blacks, excuse me, white's plans. In order to demonstrate why that is so important to play that move there and then, let me show you what happens if we try to keep the pawns intact and push past f5, king e7, and c5. And now my rook is guarded, and the bishop is super awkwardly hanging. And f6 check is going to split the rook. So, for example, I take on here like an absolute rookie who hasn't learned a lesson about not taking loose pawns when. Um, situations are dire here bishop b3 f6 check and when the king goes back to f8 boom -shki. that's how we got pen we, we got we get punished for gobbling up pawns um rather irresponsibly so that is no bueno now how is king e7 different though you might ask well i tell you how because now if we play c5 then instead of g4 black is going to play rook c8 and if we play f5, rubbing our hands together, thinking that happy days, we are in the same story as before, f6 is coming. Mm -mm. Rook takes c5, reigns on the parry at big time. Black chooses to ignore the hanging bishop and instead counterattacks the rook and black is winning. And so Nepo basically managed to solve almost all of his problems by this king move uh, because Ding had to pull back. And after gf, rook f, h3, now he manages to mix the position up enough that although the pawns are split here too, but now the rooks are very active, the king is very active, the bishop is well placed, and this white bishop is biting into his own pawns in both directions. The remainder of the game, in my opinion, carries very little value. Nepo managed to hold without any dramas whatsoever. Nice rook activation, by the way. Note this beautiful plan of bang, 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 bang to attack the pawn there. That was pretty awesome. The two pawns here are marvelously holding the three here. No problems at all again. And last but not least, there comes our rook. Rook h6, just to prove my thesis that uh, the h pawn sortie uh, about uh, 35 moves earlier with h5, h4, and h3 did in fact allow black to develop the rook on the h file. And indeed, it is now en route to f6 
to trade itself away for its body on f4 um, or not as the case may be but yeah there is no progress to be made here and again Nepo chose a very clean way to force the draw rook c5 take on c4 and now the two white pawns are just too uh, too too weak and vulnerable and know that the rook on h6 has become not only a very active piece but an awesome defender at the same time and now the piece is starting to come off and here comes uh, Nepo with surgical accuracy chucks in bishop b3 attacking bishop and pawn has to be captured but now he gobbles back up everything and uh, yeah this is all over red rover all the pawns are coming off beautiful beautiful liquidation into dread dead draw rook ending note that although f5 temporarily allows two pawns for white but being cut off along the full frank means that the king can't participate in the defense of the pawn and as we know side pawns can't win whether it be rook ending or pawn ending no difference and so the players agreed on a draw that was the first game potentially if i discount uh, the anti berlin from the previous round where the player who played with back black despite being constantly in the back whoa speaking is hard tonight sorry being constantly on the back foot did not get into any serious trouble this was a very clean hold by nepo worthy of a world championship um or worthy of a world champion rather uh is what i was going to say very interesting stuff because now he has got a white he will be probably more confident than before this round because he managed to hold with black without any dramas at all he gets a fair go at a white game again so very interesting to see how the rest of the match unfolds uh, indeed it does now look like uh, after the initial excitement of five decisive, uh, decisive games we are now uh, more on track with more draws but uh, the games are still excited and so am I can't wait to bring you round 11 be sure that uh, you tune in for that one too now I am signing out don't forget to sub to like to super like and I will see you in the next Bye.